in the Q&A right now. I had a lot of good questions come in. One question that came in was about um, Abelash was when he was talking about creating a terrain from a corridor that uh, from design meshes from a corridor or from civil cells or surface templates. If you have a lot of different items making up your design, um, what's the best way to create a terrain from that? In Abelash, I believe in your uh, presentation, you talked about using a graphical filter to do that, right? Yes. If the corridor contains a civil cells or at the intersections, or you want to create a design mesh for multiple corridors, in that case, using a graphical filter will be the best option to create your design meshes proposed. Okay. Yeah, and that gives you just kind of full control over exactly what you put in the terrain. Um, you didn't have time to show it also, but I would also look at the tool um, Create Terrain from Design Meshes. Um, that will, that tool, which we didn't have time to cover today, um, Create Terrain from Design Meshes, will look at all of the existing meshes in the DGN file, and it will um, look at the feature definitions on them, and if they are marked as, hey, I'm a, I'm a design type, here, it'll grab it all and, and create one terrain from it. So that would also be maybe another tool to use there um, along with uh, possibly the graphical filter. Okay, I had a question come in earlier about uh, Tejbir. You showed uh, creating a break line um, and then adding that break line to the terrain. You showed it just simply there. You snapped to some uh, vertices of the terrain and the question came in well how do we create that 3d line if we're not going to snap to something that's already in the terrain the answer uh, we gave was you know any any method in the product that creates a 3d break line as long as it's a 3d line there it's going to be valid for adding the terrain so methods like uh, drawing a geometry and adding a profile to it that's going to generate a 3d element using civil AccuDraw to draw and kind of control the elevations of the 3D line. Editing individual Z values in the properties is another way to kind of adjust elevations. So any, any kind of method throughout the product that allows you to create a 3D line and edit a 3D line, as long as it's you know at good elevations, then um, you would be able to just import that into the terrain. Another question that came in about labeling contours and I got to say, I don't know the answer yet, but the question was about breaking the lines behind the label. I thought uh, putting a background on the textile would do that, but there's some question on that. So that's one question I'm going to have to research offline and get an answer back to the person who posted it. Also, uh, that'll be a good um, good topic to maybe put up on our uh, community site in a wiki once we figure out um, the best way to do that. So a lot of these, um, let me just take that opportunity to put a plug in for the wikis if we don't uh, if we don't get to every question here we'll try and research the answer and create a wiki article for it and get back with you yeah another question there about deleting interior triangles that is um that last slide tejbir that you went over about right. the update that's coming in the very next update that is going to allow uh, the deletion of interior triangles as well that's something that's had a little difficulty doing in the past. Yeah, it looks like we've got more questions coming in. So if y'all want to look at those and address any, I'm going to look through these as well. I see one question uh, is, why are the triangles on outside looking different? Does that represent elevation? So uh, the answer to this question is, all the triangles uh, which I've demonstrated are on the same elevation. They all look same. But when I just select a tool that highlights the edge triangle and it represented as uh, in a different color. So I guess it highlights which triangle that do I want to delete. And whenever I bring the cursor on any of the triangle, it will highlight and show it in a different color than the other ones. Yeah. That, the, and there's one good question here about why or when would you add, remove vertices and you know, wouldn't that make your terrain different from the survey that you got? And so, that, I mean, that's a good question. That goes to um, that goes to a larger question of when do you make these manual edits versus um, 
uh, when would you make these manual edits that would give you different possible different survey or different results in a terrain that you got from your survey? I would say my my first thought on that is, um, you know, the, the survey is the you know it is the instrument of record on the from what was collected out in the ground, but oftentimes it can be incomplete. And oftentimes when you run it through a triangulation algorithm, it can draw triangles in such a way that may not actually truly represent what's going on out in the field and may not actually represent uh, from what survey data was collected. So it is, it is often necessary to make manual edits like this to a terrain to maybe better represent what the survey was trying to intend to convey. But you're right. That's going to be totally controlled by your organization or your client as to how much freedom you have to edit what was coming in from the surveyor. So adding to that, uh, what I've recently faced, uh, when we create a corridor, bring that in uh, as a part of the train model. So when it is reprocessed, like on the minor curbs or the edges of the corridor, it turns out to be it was not finishing up properly. So Maybe in that area, we can use the delete vertex, whichever vertex they are like externally, not letting you have the final product. So you can delete the vertex from the edges or the minor areas, which once reprocess the train. Okay. Sorry, looking back through these. Um, one question here is, can you bring a DEM into a terrain? Who Abalash, did you handle the import options? Can you speak to that one? And if not, I'll go. Yeah, if we look at, um, I think you showed it on the slide, but that is going to be one of the import options there. If you select a, import a terrain from a file, DEM is one of the selections or one of the options there. So it will, it should import to a terrain just fine. Yes, sorry about that. Yes, uh, DEM files can be imported. Okay. to create terrain models in the DGN. Okay, so here's a here's a good question. Um, if you create a terrain from elements um, to create, I guess, a, a platform or a pad, and then you add a linear template around the outside of that. Um, so you're using two different methods there. One is from elements and one is the linear template. How do you create a single terrain? from those uh, those two sets of terrains, basically. And I would think um, a, a couple of different ways there. You could create a complex terrain from the two of them. Um, you could use the terrain from elements, and or you could just do the, t if you had them both set to a design feature type, you could do the create terrain from design meshes. So there's a few different um, methods. I like... I've been tending toward the create terrain from design meshes since that's been added in in the past few builds. That's that's been a real handy tool to create. Um, the only the only trick on that one is making sure your feature definitions for these separate pieces that you've been creating have a feature type as design set on it. And what it does that command again, it just looks at everything in the current DGN. And if it's got a design feature definition, then it um, it's going to add it to the new terrain. I see one more question it's asked when editing a train, does it matter what edge method you have previously selected, like silvers and uh, maximum triangle length? I'd say uh, yes, by selecting the slivers, it will reduce the maximum triangle length by an average. And also if you select the maximum triangle length to some of the value as say somewhere 10, 15, it will reduce and take the all the triangles into that limit. Here's a question that actually quite a complex one, but we'll take a stab at it here. If uh, if we create a terrain from a tin that isn't a grid coordinate, but you need the surface to be in ground uh, coordinates, or the question is how do you how do you do that? If I try to add a surface adjustment factor, yeah, maybe you're trying to do some kind of scaling on it. The way I've seen this handled lately is by referencing our grid coordinates and using the geographic coordinate system to handle the scaling for us and, and reference it into a DGN that is in ground coordinates. That'll let the, the when I do a reference attachment and I reference it using the geographic coordinate systems, that'll do the transformation for me 
and then I can just work in the ground coordinate um, DGN file and and create my terrains and label them and all that kind of stuff. So um, I would say using the geographic coordinate systems in the in the platform tools um, and having that control the the scaling and transformation for you in the reference attachment would be that's my first thought on it. If that doesn't um, solve it for you, I'd say give us a call on the support line um, and have us work work with what your specific conditions are. And but again, just taking a first stab at it, uh, I'm just going to use the reference, uh, the geographic coordinate systems in a reference. Okay, one question here about um, using graphical filter, a dynamic update to the terrain versus static. Abelash, you had that slide that showed. Uh, dynamic versus static rules. Where did using a graphical filter fall into that? Well, uh, in case of graphical filters, uh, that is uh, up to us what type of rules uh, that will be get created to the source data. In just case of the graphical filters, uh, it can be selected. Either it can have a dynamic uh, rule or a static rule based on how the graphical filter is configured. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.